just north of the city centre is a little-known Manchester suburb called Harper Hay. They say the area is just full of rough families. I don't think it's such a bad place. Ten years ago, a government report branded it the most deprived neighbourhood in England. It's a simple question I ask. Yeah, and I'm trying to answer it. Things have got a bit better since then, but life round here is still no bed of roses. There's a well-known local expression, they'll steal the shit out of your arse. Not because they want it, just, just so that you haven't got it. Half the people have no qualifications. <laughs> and antisocial behaviour is rife. Are you the neighbour from hell? Probably, yeah. People round here might not be the poshest, but they're not lacking in spirit. That's why we call ourselves the dysfunctionals. <laughs> they're just trying to get on with life, be themselves... I ain't driving the van like this. ...and follow their dreams. I could be like a different person when I'm acting. It is true that a good play means no epilogue. For one long summer, the young people of Harper Hay let us into their secret world. I have a penis! I shake it in the morning! Sharing the good times. Megan Fox, eat your ass out. And the bad. Hello? Go find another street to go and terrorise. This is how it really feels growing up the hard way. You might think you know people like us, but you don't know nothing yet. <laughs>this week, market trader Jamie's dreaming of pop stardom, but his mum Donna's unhappy about his unlikely mentor. Ah, louder. Ah! I don't give a shit who she is and what she is. You need to ask Belinda, what do you get out of this? At the wishy-washy laundrette, burglars are broken in through the roof. It's disgusting. You just won't think they'd do it here. And the local dance school are putting on their summer show but it's proving hard work for new trainee teacher, Kelly. I need to just kill down and full stress out. It's market day in Harper Hay. Over 100 stall owners cater for bargain hunting locals four days a week. 19-year-old ladies man, Jamie, is well known on the market. Do the weekend of it. Weekend bender, innit? Yeah, Get a few birds, bang them and then go on. <laughs> That's what we're doing. He works here under the strict supervision of Mum Donna. Don't ask 30, 40 quid and I need it back today. Jamie hustles a living buying and selling second-hand goods. So anything. I saw a woman three irons once, just because they were different colours. About 50 quid in I got I'm selling it for the ten up. Come on, love, you're robbing a bag in there for Christmas. Go on, right then, box. Jamie, can you go and buy £20 worth of DVDs and sell them for 60 quid? Yeah, ducking and diving, Jamie. Come, man of the year. Box sets and everything, it's all cartoons and that. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Make a few doddle on it, can Oh, yeah. That's it. A lot of things that I buy and sell cold shop, they all uh, legit. I don't know. You have to buy them first and find out for yourself. <laughs> but Jamie doesn't see himself on the market for the rest of his life. He dreams of becoming a professional singer. I'm trying to make myself a, a career in music, but it's not going too well. I love my music, I can be lost about it. All my CDs. The promos and all that. Done. Bosh. Look at them. The posters. Me take that autograph. Take me at will to me then. I was always a fan of Robbie Williams' music. And someone said to me, if you heard his earlier stuff, what was that? Which would take that. So I listened to them and yeah. It's like some since. Then I got a tattoo done. He's dead proud of that tattoo. And I was dead proud he sat there and had it done because he screamed like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Could listen to Robbie Williams' albums all day. Because he, he went through a phase where he thought he didn't have a good voice or he couldn't dance, but he could. That's it, and I think that's what I go through. But he can put on a show when he goes for it. I had the, uh, the honour of seeing it. So you see me, I was screaming, me, I was the girl, and I was on my own. Like, North of Harper Hay Market is Moston Lane, which is known locally as a crime hotspot. It's also home to the Wishy Washy Laundrette, run by Amber Wakefield's family. Mum Karen, stepdad Paul, and sister Maddie. What is Fifty Shades of Grey? A book. I know, but what's it about? <laughs> 
That's your sister. She's the one reading it. It's rude. If it's rude, why the hell would you want to read it? That's what I thought. The Wakefields have to deal with some bizarre behaviour from their customers, all of which gets recorded on CCTV. Third person we caught now weeing in the shop. There's been a few times like someone's weed in one, don't know why, they've just come in to wee in a bottle. And then we'll put it back on the side so someone's swilled the washing out with wee. We obviously laugh about it watching it on the camera, but I don't think they'll be too happy if you found out. You would not believe the stuff that happens in here. I laugh at it really. People come in here and nick our pictures, I was disgusted. Yeah. You get some really weird people in the laundrette. Someone once came in and had a fight with the machine. Didn't kick it, didn't touch it, just shouting at it. We've had people coming in, taking their old clothes off, putting them in the washing machines and um, putting underwear on from the lost property basket. Down the road is the Body Matrix gym, where appearances can be deceiving. It's not just where lads pump iron, it's also where local kids come to dance. Bring around! Kelly Smart has always dreamed of dancing. When I'm not at dancing, I'm just Kelly Smart, and when I am dancing, I don't know what the name is, but I'm someone completely different. <laughs> At 25, Kelly has never had a full-time job, but she's just been taken on for a trial period at Jodie's dance school. Whacking! Kelly's an old friend from school, and, you know, we used to hang out on the streets and get up to naughty things and, you know, and misbehave, and then we grew up and uh, we kind of lost contact, but I messaged her and said, I've got an opening for another uh, teacher to be tutored. Would you like to do it? And she was like, yeah. Right, you can do 10 more. If Jodie wasn't doing what she's doing, what are all these young children going to be doing? You know, they could be on the street drinking, getting into trouble. So it is good because she's keeping kids off the street. Come on, attitude. Once a year, the school puts on a summer show where all 50 pupils perform. They've been rehearsing for six months and the show is now only weeks away. For Jodie, it has to be perfect. <gasps> what were you today? What's going on? Right, go out that door, because I don't know what's going on with you today. If Five, Kelly handles eight, the pressure of the show, Jodie's going to take her on full time and pay her a wage. I've never done one of these shows before, so this will be my first one, but Jodie did say that it's like really hectic and some of the children run on the stage late and some children don't even get to get on the stage, so I just have to be on backstage to make sure everything's under control with the children that I have to look after. Great. Kelly, please, will you go and teach Tyler that over there for me? Thank you. OK, you ready? You're going to go like this. That's going to go down. We've been doing rehearsals all week and it looks really, really good. Still a few children that are like nervous and keep forgetting a few of the lines and stuff like that, but it's going really well. I want my full-time job to be a qualified dance teacher. I don't want one job here, one job there and what whatnot. I just want to be a dance teacher, so this is what I'm working towards. Jamie's taking some time off from the market to pursue his singing career. Nice to be famous, yeah. I don't think I'd be arrogant if I was famous. I think I'd be a bit cheeky. He's found an unlikely mentor. Hi, uh, oh, hello, Belinda. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Good to see you, yeah. In the form of singer and drag queen, Belinda Scandal. Are you ready, Flower? I am. Right then. Call me good, call me bad. Call me anything you want to, baby But I know that you're sad And I know I made you happy with the one thing that you never had Baby, I'm your man Don't Well, I met Belinda uh, going into a nightclub for the beer I just 
the drag person on the door. Come in, boys and girls, free shots, free interest, that's it, free booze. That's the worst thing you want to say to us. We're in there straight away. Sensual inspiration. We just got a chat about how she could help me. And her baby steps grew into bigger steps, and yeah. So it's working for me so far. Yeah, I'll have to listen back to that. No, it's gonna sound awful, isn't it? No. Jamie's musical tastes are quite similar to mine. They're very sort of campy, 80 sort of tune. It's unusual taste, really, I would say, for such a straight, stocky fellow. How did you feel it went? Uh, I don't know, it's weird hearing my voice back again. But, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah? Really enjoyed it, yeah. Good, good. Probably sound like a fucking cat being strangled, but... No, you don't. But Jamie's mum isn't convinced that Belinda's intentions towards Jamie are good. No, listen, he's working for a transvestite. She could be gay, she could be do a lot of yeah. I'm telling you, enough is enough. Jamie's back at work, and it's time to face the music. Well, I'd like to speak to her first and see where this entails. No, it's my fucking business. It's my business to know when it's my not. son. I'm old enough to with the shim. I'm not fucking with her. Do, with that way, don't mean that way. I mean, say that, then. going off with her, you're not going off with the shit. <sighs> I'd give my life for him. If he needed a kidney, I'd give him a kidney. If he needed my blood to keep him alive, I'd do anything for Jamie. You're a young lad. Exactly. I want to see where it goes. Ma'am, you're not. It's my business. We'll discuss it another time, yeah? We won't, because it's been discussed. Yeah, it's my business. You, we will. We won't. I want to know for what purposes you want your part. For work, yeah, work. to get myself nowhere, yeah, she's helping right, me. Whatever. My mum always thinks she's right, yeah, but she's not all the time. Sometimes she's wrong, but she doesn't admit to it. But, you know, she's a good mum. That's what she is, she's a good mum. Half a mile away on Moston Lane, there's been a burglary at the Wishy Washy Laundrette. There it is, see the first tile. It's disgusting. You just won't think they'd do it here. I've never dreamt of somebody coming through, through the ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> never. Oh, that smash through. Couldn't see any of the machines through rubble. It was that bad. All over. One minute you were just locking the shop and then they must have just been up there ready for... just to break through. Yeah. So it must have been, like, obviously planned? It must have been planned. As soon as I left here and Ash said there were three lads outside. No, one, two lads there, one on the corner, shouting over to each other. The thieves stole cash and property, leaving the Wakefields thousands out of pocket. We went through everything and emptied all the service watches and took the customers' backs as well. So it was totally different when I was a child. Then suddenly, kids got given more rights than adults. When all authority was taken away from teachers, police and parents, the world went crap. I mean, we used to get strapped, didn't we? Well, I didn't personally, but we had the strap. It was legal in schools and everything. And I always say it now, bring the strap back. It's just become really downhill now anyway. Tanging, tanging. Yeah, it's really... Moston's got a really bad name now. It's just, it's a mess, isn't it? And the crime has just gone up. Well, karma, I say. What goes around, comes around. They'll get the comeuppance, mm. won't they? With Harper Hay classed as a high crime, high poverty area, everyone has their own interpretation of the law. Dodge it is where you buy a telly, you plug it in, it goes boom and blows your electric with it. That's dodge it. You know. Yeah. Dodgy notes where you get paid from them, or they pay you, you check the fucking notes, there's no queen head on it. That's dodge it. It's not wrong, you got to do what you got to do to get by, ain't you? Nothing there. No, nothing on there. Oh, if I in the country, I'd stop crime by 80%. My dad bit where robberies, like really bad ones, would have their hands chopped off, and then did it again, they'd have the other hands chopped off. Then obviously they can't do it a third time because they wouldn't be able to nick anything, would they? So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be horrible, mate. I'd be assassinated. I think because some areas look rough, I think just the way it looks, people go, oh, don't like the look of that. But you, you can't judge a book by its cover. You've got to get to know people in there. There's going to be rough people and scummy people 
everywhere you go. It's not just our area. You can get it in posh areas. Kelly has lived in Harper Hay all her life. Growing up wasn't always easy. You have to learn how to fend for yourself and whatnot. I got a big chip on my shoulder. I had a really bad attitude. I was getting into trouble all the time. I just was with the wrong people who were always stood on street corners, underage drinking and smoking and young guys would rob cars and would joyride round estates in cars and stuff like that. Kelly still lives on the estate, just 10 minutes walk from the house she grew up in. This up here, this is my mum um, and this is my dad when he was in the fire service. That means a lot to me, that. My mum died 12 years ago. You know, like, it's been hard, it has been hard for me, like, without her, because my dad's had to be my mum and my dad, you know. It was just basically being Kelly since her mum died, because everything that her mum used to do, I had to take it on. So there is a special bond, I think, between me and Kelly. She had cervical cancer and she fought it for years as well. One year she'd find out she was in the clear, then a few months later it'd come back. Then she was clear for a few more months. Then a year later she found out it'd come back. And I think when I got to about the age of nine, ten, it just gradually got worse and worse from then. My mum was just getting really tired of all these operations and medication and in and out of hospital, she just wanted to be left. So... She died when I was, like, 12. But the only thing that upsets me now is I don't remember the sound of her voice, like, at all. Like, at all. I try to think of it and I, I can't. I'm getting emotional. I'm okay. I know that she had a tough time with her mum passing away and she kind of got into bad crowds and things. When she first started with me, she was one of those people that would get up and it didn't really matter what she did for the rest of the day. I think that her coming to, to us has kind of helped her have a purpose. As night falls on Harper Hay Market, the stalls are packed away and the area is deserted. But three miles away in Manchester's gay district, the fun has only just begun. Despite his mum's concerns, Jamie's spending even more time in the gay village with his mentor, Belinda. She runs a busy cabaret bar, and Jamie's come to pick up some performing tips. For straight people that don't like that kind of thing, they've got this unique idea that all these faggots and puffs and gays are going to try it on on you, but they couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> If you want to be surrounded by knobheads and dickheads trying to make a fucking name for themselves, then that's when you go elsewhere. But if you want a nice quiet drink, a good lap, go to the village. You, you gotta have boobs. Some of the transvestites and transsexuals look a lot more natural. I've made a point every time I do anything, not looking natural. Nothing worse than a builder in drag. Are we ready? Everybody join in! I was 
absolutely rast, and I mean I was fucked first time I went in. And yeah, I started going in again after that bit by bit, and that's how I got to know Belinda really. It's very trusting, kind in person, yeah. Willing to help you in every way she can. So many young people want to be famous these days simply because they see the celebrity side of it and not the work side of it. Love it! They think celebrity is the answer. I don't know why they come to me, because I'm just a drag queen in the middle of Canal Street. What we need to do is this, Jamie. We need to see what you want to do with your life. I want to be on the stage. Jamie's convinced that with Belinda's help, he'll get his 15 minutes of fame. But Mum Donna is suspicious about Belinda's motivation. In what way can she help you? Try and get me that foot on that stool to ever get promoted. I'm not saying there's going to be this big name pops out or whatever, but I want to be able to do good enough to keep doing it. So what's she getting out of it? A percentage of whatever I make, because that's what So we... basically she wants to be Man, your manager? Yeah, it's... Want... I don't give a shit who she is and what she is. I'm not bothered about anything like that, what she chooses to do in her so personal life. So you know what I mean? I've seen the fucking right? man over to me, don't even know. You let me speak. All no. I'm saying is, you need to ask Belinda, what do you get out of this? What do I get out of this? Is it going to be Jamie and Belinda? Is it Belinda Mom, and Jamie? you're not letting me fucking speak. I you? It's a simple question I ask. Yeah, and I'm trying to answer it if you let me speak. You ask a question, you ask another ten fucking others after it. Now, go on. Right. I just said to you, we're not saying there's definitely going to be this, what's she going to make? We don't know anything yet. That's who what said, said Who it... said she's even going to promote me? I do know how it works. If you raise your voice at me one more time, you'll have no, no teeth. No, but ma'am, cos you tormenting me. You're not, let... you're not understanding my point. And I'm going to go down and see Belinda next week. Don't be kicking off like you I'm not going to kick off, Jamie! I'm just telling you, so you know. She wants handbag scraps, she's got it. Oh, my mum. She's a tosser at times. It's like, for fuck's sake, I'm 20 years old, just back off and leave me alone. You know? A mile down the road live 24 year old Anthony and his girlfriend Renika. Yeah? Anthony has three kids Linnea, stepson Levion, and Lazaja. <laughs> stop, stop digging the nose. No, it's not funny, stop. <laughs> I did always want to be a dad, but. I don't know, I just I think... Because uh, of my accident and stuff, I didn't, when I was a kid and that, I didn't think that I'd ever have any kids. But yeah, now I've got them. I won't change them for the world. Come on, chicken. Come on. Unemployed Anthony does the majority of the childcare. This way. I found it pretty hard to get a job. I wanted to do kitchen fitting. I've got a level two in site carpentry and level two in kitchen fitting. But I don't know any time I've ever gone for a job or an interview, it's never really gone too good. I think they just feel that because I've only got one arm, I won't be able to do certain things. It's a bit annoying for me, yeah. Since he was 21 months old, Anthony has had over 20 operations. I was at my nana's. My mum thought I was downstairs with my nana, and my nana thought I was upstairs with my mum. And I was in the hallway uh, near the electric fire and I was mad for the colour red and I pressed the red button on and then when the bars have glued up red I gripped hold of it with my left hand because I was left handed and then I fell in between the metal and the wood and like burnt my face. My left hand has been amputated because it was so badly burnt. But I don't remember nothing of it or anything. You're the only nappies you've got, boss? Yeah, that's all I've got until Friday, probably. Is it? All right, then. £2 each, please. With less than £100 benefits per week, money's tight. And Anthony's got an idea about how to save some cash for the kids' futures. Cheers, fella. A few people have said to me that I should put them in for modelling. 
So we got in touch with a modelling agency a couple of days ago and they told me to take a few pictures of them and send them in. I'm going to go to Harper A today and get a camera. Hoping really that something comes out of it so that I'll be able to give my kids a better life. Like if they ask for anything, at least I can get it at them and don't have to say no because they haven't got it. Down at the Wishy Washy, the Wakefields are repairing the damage from the burglary. Since the break in, the family are on the lookout for any more potential crime in the area. Madison's like a little investigator. I think she takes after my mum. She went out with a phone and just filmed these three guys just peeing up the entry. They just stood there in broad daylight in front of absolutely everybody, just there, blatantly. They aren't just using the alleyway for a toilet during daylight hours. Karen's also caught them at it at night. Well, the thing is, I don't know if they had a little watch out because there was a little black kid at the door over there near the restaurant shouting, Enemy! <laughs> Just peeing there, uh, dirty, dirty ones. Karen's so incensed that she's gone to the police, who've agreed to stake out the alleyway later that day. It's crime, it's a proper back crime to pee on the street, and they get away with it, and it's just annoying. Uh, it's hanging, it's horrible. It's graceful through, it looks like a bronx round here. PC Evans has been fighting crime in Harper Hay for the past two and a half years. So we'll, uh, we'll head up to Moston Lane, um, park outside Wishy Washies, and we'll see if there's any gentleman urinating in the street. On the face of things, you think, well, it's not crime of the century, but if that's making her life, you know, a bit of a misery, or that's affecting her life to the point that she's had to speak to the police about it, then. You know, we've got to, we, we, we'll do something about it. Nobody there. We've, um, we've not been much. Nothing at all. Not even been out. Not even been outside. Have they? No. You yeah. Be more discreet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that's the place for advice. I do not. The thing I've is, I've got the smallest <laughs> car I've got. <laughs> well, it'll prevent, won't it? It'll prevent him from doing anything. Yeah, as long as you know, like you know, there's a bit of a police presence now. It is a good feeling if you've had a good day and you can get home and think, I've made a bit of a difference today. It's not a huge difference, but I've done something to help the area. Three miles north of Harper Hay, it's the final rehearsal of the dance show. All the tickets have been sold, and in only two days' time, over 100 friends and family will be watching the kids perform. Kelly knows she has to impress if she's going to turn her volunteer job into a paid one. To me, it's all about responsibility, because if I get the responsibility, I can prove to Jodie that I can do it. If you are a pink lady, if you go up these stairs, and not the way, guys, don't run! Because I do care about all the kids and love them dearly, and I look after them, and the fact that they get that opportunity to actually come to the class and to be out of on the streets, let's say, Makes me feel good. Put your jacket on. Stage, you need to be where Sam is backstage looking yeah. after the children. When Sam comes to you and says, I need sweet, she yeah. wants to be able to get all sweet right, ready. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Right. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to get shouted at or anything like that. Tyler, you in, you're not in play, are you? I've never done one of these shows before, so this will be my first one. It's just going to be a bit crazy. But as a newcomer to work in life, it's going to be a tough day ahead for Kelly. It's going to be a long night, this is the feel it. Denise, get on stage! You're the ones that are going to look silly, guys, not me, you should know this. 
Backstage, the heat is on and rehearsals are running late. The pressure finally gets too much for Kelly and she walks out. I was livid. I was annoyed that she just kind of buckled under the pressure and then rather than staying around and helping and doing what she should have done, she just got off and went and it was just so unprofessional. With Jodie and the kids left in the lurch, Kelly only has two days to get her act together for the big show. My head's not fully screwed on. I just know it's not, you know. It's, obviously, I can still do stupid things. I can still say stupid things. And I can still act in stupid ways and stuff like that. But I hope dance plays a part in my future. Well, I'm going to go outside, <laughs> take a few pictures of you while you're playing with toys and stuff. Anthony's taking some photos of his kids that he hopes will get them signed up to a modelling agency. Let me see. Yay! Say cheese. You can't have it. It's not too spicy, is it? No, I've only put um, goat. Anthony's mum, Maria, lives 10 minutes down the road and often comes over for lunch. It's all right. What's it like for you? That was in our first flat. Before he had the accident, Maria tried to get Anthony into modelling. Well, I think it was Little Woods and they took the pictures and if you won, you went through to modelling. But they never picture. <laughs> oh, he's good looking, me. Still good looking, aren't you, son? Mm. That's what all the neighbours used to say, isn't it? Still good looking, though, isn't it? I wouldn't wear it, I would. Oh, you are terrible, mate. Eh? Yeah. We used to call call it. it. We used to call him <laughs> the mad professor. He's done a comb over on me. Loads. No, I didn't. Yeah, he did, there no, was one there, he's done a comb over. That was it before you got burned. That was about three weeks before it. Maria and Renika have never spoken about the details surrounding Anthony's accident. Well, what happened to Anthony on the day you got... Um, I put boiled eggs on for me and him, and then I went to wash my hair. It, I'd say about the time that you shampooed your hair and you're rinsing it, that yeah. I, I smelt the burning. So I thought it was the panhandle. So I shouted to mum to turn the panhandle off. <sighs> and then she screamed. <laughs> And then I come down <laughs> and she had him in her arms. But he was like zonked out. Yeah. So it, you, you didn't notice anything at first. And then she sort of turned him over and his, his, his nose was a bit burnt there, like charcoal. Like. But his face wasn't, his face was had two white lines. But when you looked at his hands, you knew, you knew it. You could see where he basically grabbed the bar because it was burnt in. And it was just one of them days that you wish you could turn the clock back. But you always had a smile on your face, didn't you? You, Ch you just chicken. always got on with things. Just as a little kid, it never bothered him. He didn't have a complex about himself. It wasn't an issue, his burns. He knew he was scarred, but it wasn't an issue for him. He always had a smile on his face, always joined in. He'd done swimming, done sports. He never let anything trouble him, not when he was young. But when Anthony got into his teens, his attitude changed and he started to feel angry. On his 19th birthday, he made a terrible decision that would change his life forever. I've been out all day drinking, and then it was like 12 o'clock at night as I was riding back home. I come past two lads and they've said, uh, give Freddy Krueger back his mask. So I jumped off the bike, had the ladder fight on the park, and then I've ended up jumping back on my bike and on my way home, winding myself up. I've ended up going home and getting a knife and then coming back and ended up stabbing him. For Anthony to be arrested for stabbing somebody, it was just not him. That, I, can't, I just couldn't believe that he'd do something like that. I thought, surely he's not got to a point of this now. And then to find out he stabbed the lad four times and that the lad would never walk again, 
because Anthony spent his life in, in hospitals. So now this lad is going to spend his life in a wheelchair. So it just didn't make sense. And then he ended up getting six and a half years for grievous bodily harm. Yeah. Which had done three or three months in jail. I do feel guilty about it. Oh Obviously, I went over the top. If anyone calls me names now, then I just let, let it blow over my head, really. <laughs> Got too much to lose if I did go back to jail. Concerned about Belinda's intentions towards Jamie, Mum Donna has insisted on meeting the new woman in her son's life. Jamie's a good lad. I know lots of people that like Jamie of both genders, and I was a bit like, did she want Jamie? because of his voice and his looks, and I'm his mother at the end of the day. I'm going to think these things. Hiya. Hello, love. Are you all right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet I'm you, I'm Belinda. Too. I'm Donna, Jamie's mum. Oh, God. On cobbles. <laughs> um, before I start, Belinda... Yes. ..I just thank you for already dealing with Jamie. Oh! And, um, not a lot, but it's thank my you. way of saying... Thank you. Well, I've only looked after him, pursued his little dream for him and a little bit more. That's why I want to speak to you, really, because not to be disrespectful to you, Belinda, I found it a bit strange him coming here. Mm. The gay village is Jamie's night out, but to actually get attached to somebody that's associated. But that's just because here in the gay village, we don't <laughs> judge nobody no, for nothing. No, I don't ask that of anybody. Mm. I don't know if you know if Jamie's told you, but he's had so many people use him for what he's good at. So you believe in his singing, then? Oh, yeah, I believe in my son yeah. very much. God. He can do anything, and I'm not kidding you. He could do Mr Bean at three years old. Really? But I know he's got something for Linda. Yes, without a doubt. I wouldn't be spending my time if I didn't think he did. OK. The one thing the two women in his life do agree on is that Jamie isn't reaching his full potential. And she pays him. To get further on, he's got to start pushing himself a little bit more now. I think we need to push him. I can push him as much as I can, and you can push him as much as you can. He's got to start pulling his socks up now, though. I think it's time, Belinda, to grow up. I do. There's only so much you and I can do, and that's being honest. He's got to do it himself. <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you. And if you want my number, get it off, Jamie. I will do, yeah, definitely. And I do appreciate 100% on my heart and my mum's life what you've done. No problem. And what you're doing. And I'll keep doing it, cos I believe in him. I believe in him, and that's two of us. They'll be spot on. Well, with two of us, you can't go wrong, can you, really? He's in shit now, innit? Innit? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Belinda. No problem. I think uh, there's a lot of mothering going on there. Some would say smothering. I think he just wants to be loved and liked. But I think he's got problems where he's been too smothered and he's not been able to pursue his own little dream. Was a bit suspicious, young boy. Transvestite, owned the club, what did she want him for? You know, I thought all kinds of things from was a club going under, could Jamie bring it up, fresh me in the club. But I'm quite happy with Belinda now. She's loved me. And I took her chocolates. Thank you, me. My drink. I expected all the diva bit and it's nothing like that. She's absolutely lovely. She's got a lot of confidence in you. No, I haven't. She's got a lot of faith in you. I haven't. You haven't listened? No, I have. No. And you've got to start helping yourself for her to help you. She really wants to help you. Well, what's doing in my head? It's like it's my business. It needs to stay my business until I'm comfortable with everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking dives in too fast, too nosy. Right, we're gonna go ahead. Come here. Come on. Today, Anthony and Renika are taking the kids to a model agency for a test photo shoot. Are you going in to get some pictures, Naya? Um, so, we'll say what we're going to do is just do a little bit of a mini shoot with them. 
um, and just maybe see how they kind of perform in front of the camera. If they photograph well, Anthony hopes it may lead to paid work and a career in modelling for the kids. Yay. Good job. Where do you see? Show your teeth. Jump over there. Look, who's that? That is you. Look how cool you look. I'd just put them in for it because obviously when they get older and that, it could be something that they want, they want to do. And not only that, in the meantime, while they're doing it, they get paid for it and you can save that money up for them as well. Stand there. Look. Look. Look at the man. Say cheese to the man. Cheese. Oh. See what Vayan's doing, Pod. Perfect at me. Yeah. Look at that. Smile. Keep your face straight, Vayan. Keep your face straight, Vayan. I wouldn't really push him into a, a, any job particular myself. I just hope that they end up like getting a good job with a good income so that, that they can have a good way of living, really. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. That's it, Bob. Come here. Thank you. See you later. Bye. The family now have to wait and see if the agency wants to take the kids onto their books. Yeah. Back at the wishy washy, there's been a breakthrough in catching the lads who burgled the laundrette. Well, when they broke in, Turn the cameras round, yeah, face to face the wall, yeah. Clear footage of them doing it, yeah. You know, actually got the faces on the camera, yeah. Fucking knobhead. One of the lads I actually knew, I've known him since um, 1997. The lads are local to the area, and a couple of weeks ago, Karen came face to face with one of the burglars. When I seen him, I wanted to kill him, me, but he was going, Paul. Paul, um, we didn't mean to do the shop, we only meant to do the flat. And I'm like, do you know you took food out of my kids' mouths? And we well, wanted to strangle him, but I, I'm not violent or anything anyhow, but I did what I throttle him. Well, it's, it's, it's affected the business pretty badly. The big robbery on the shop really, really affected me, Mum. But, like, really affected me because I remember her going to work and as soon as they pulled the shutters up, everything smashed in. I think my mum cried. It was a really hard time because I remember her thinking, what the hell is she going to do? With the help of the CCTV evidence, the police brought a case against one of the men, and today, the Wakefields are getting their day in court. These are people that just sit behind a desk, wearing suits, pushing fucking pens all day, right? They haven't got a clue about what crime's all about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two years. Oh, brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we thought it'd be out in two weeks, got two years. Yeah, got two years, we're going to serve half of that. So he's got to... No, out next year, sounds better saying that. Yeah. I was expecting him to be out in two to three weeks. Yeah, I was proud of that judge today. I thought it was going to be a soft touch, did you? Yeah, I thought it was going to be like Marjorie. I did, Def definitely, definitely. Two days later, the Wakefields received a letter saying that the judge had reconsidered his decision and the robber had his sentence reduced from two years to 14 months. Sit. Snoopy, sit. Since walking out of the dress rehearsal, Kelly's only got one chance left to prove she can do it, at the show itself. When she needs a pep talk, she always turns to Dad Sam. My dad has had to be my mum and my dad for the past 13, 14 years. He was always there to give me a cuddle when I needed it. He was always there to reassure me that everything's going to be all right. And like now, today, me and my dad, we have the most open conversations that some people will look at us and be like, are you really having that conversation with your dad? But that's why he's my best friend and I love him to pieces and I don't know what I'd do without him. He's my rock. You reckon you'll get a job out of this then, or? I hope I will. At 25, it's about time now you you got some at there. I know. I want uh, it. 
It's just, you Mom, know what I'm like sometimes. If your mum had been here, you know what your mum would have been like. She'd have been on at you all the time. I know. A lot more than me, so. I know. You've got, but... your, own, you've got your own flat now. You've got your own independence, so you can't keep relying on me. No, I know. Like, I know I rely on you sometimes and stuff like that, and I shouldn't do. Yeah, I always like, do, Kelly. No, I That's because you're my little girl, isn't it? Kelly's mannerisms are very much like her mum's. In fact, the other day she just did something that her mum did and I just burst out laughing. And she went, what are you laughing at? And I just went... And before he even said it, she went, don't tell me my mum did that as well. I said, just like your mum. Go on, son, break it off. Healthy life yeah. and happiness. That's all I've ever wanted for Kelly. And if she makes me a granddad on the way, fair enough. Doing gymnastics, you need to get ready now. Quick, oh, on, quick, 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 quick. Why have you got. Molly, why have you got a pink thing in your hair? You're a boy. It's the day of the dance show. The parents are arriving and the curtain will go up in less than an hour. Jodie's giving Kelly one last chance to prove she's up to the job. Back in the room, everybody back in the room. Over the past few months, she's tested Jodie's patience to the limit. There are only so many chances that I would give someone um, before it'd be a waste of my time. Look at me. The main thing is I just think about what it is that I've got to do. Just take my time and try my best. All you can do is try your best, you know. Rome weren't built in a day. And I do think it's going to be a success. Because we've been working on it for like six months now. What time is it, Sam, please? Really? Oh, we need to go, we need to start. And cue music, please. But, you know, it's like children are not putting the right outfits on and children are going missing. So I'm sort of the other side and I'm like, I need this person, I need this person. And everyone's all over at the moment. It's just a bit crazy. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know. So you need to go and sit down. There's people missing. There's children missing. There's, like, people who don't even know where they're supposed to be. I don't know where I'm supposed to be right now. Oh, Sam, you need to get up. Oh, Sam, you need to get up. It's a lot of pressure to like be under to do a show like that. And I thought, God, no wonder Jodie stresses so much because it's just, she's just a legend being able to do something like that because I couldn't do it. So, you know, I take me out off to her. It was really good. When you've worked with kids for so long and then you see them perform, you just want to cry because it's just so good. And like, it's like, you know, how you'd be proud of your child and it just makes you feel proud that you've taught them what they know. The dance school is giving me an opportunity to do what I want to do, you know, be a qualified dance teacher, be successful, and it's actually helping to keep children off the street. parents were still crying. Everybody was saying how fantastic it was, amazing, awesome, brilliant, really paid off. The show's been a triumph, but the success is bittersweet for Kelly. Jodie feels she's not quite ready to take on the responsibility of a teaching job, but she's going to try again at the next school show in six months' time. It's been two weeks since Anthony's children did their modelling test shoot, and he's had some good news. Modelling agency have given me a ring, told me that the kids are up on the website, so I'm just going to go and have a look on the website. All right, we'll jump on a computer, mate, yeah? The children are now licensed to work and ready to take on their first professional assignment. Definitely feel proud. She's got some really nice pictures. Yeah, gotta be for me, on it? Gotta be for me with the good looks. Can't be Renika. 
if I didn't have my scars, then a lot of people that I've met through my life and that I probably won't, I probably wouldn't have met. Just because something's happened to you, it don't mean that that's the end of your world. You can either go on and live your life, or you can sit in your bedroom and dwell on whatever did or didn't have scars and what if this and what if that. I suppose if I did do that, then I wouldn't have my kids that I've got today, would I really? And I wouldn't change them for the world. There are big changes on the estate where Jamie spent his entire life. It's not what we grew up in. It's a ghost town, isn't it? You knew everybody in the Masonettes. Well, I ever leave the estate I'd grown up on here. No. Don't think I could. So. There's also change in Jamie's life. In just a few hours, he'll be performing his first professional gig at Belinda Scandal's cabaret bar. I know you can do it, Jamie. I don't need to say anything else, because I think you can do it. Nothing tells me otherwise you can't. I just wish you the best of luck. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody has their 15 minutes. As long as I've got loads of, like, fandango, loads of girls, that's fucking lovely for me. We love you. Can we have an autograph? What, are you boobs? <laughs> fucking pleasure. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good, good, good. So, how are you feeling? Nervous, excited. Are you very scared? I am. My ass is fucking flapping, bro. How <laughs> delightful to but picture that. It'll be all right. It'll though. be right. Yeah. Are you warmed up? Uh, nearly, yes. Yeah. A scream. A scream? Yeah. Look me in the eyes and scream in my face. No, I can't do Go that. Go on, do you. it. Do but... it. Scream at me. Ah! Go on. Ah! Louder. Ah! That's the shizzle sunshine. Despite her initial doubts, Donna's overcome her reservations about Belinda and has headed to the gay village to support her son. Come on now, boys and girls. Three shots, three entry, live cabaret. He just wants something to grab hold of in life and he cherishes what he's got, he cherishes family. He's been a brilliant kid. I'd have another kid like Jamie. He's coming your way in just a few seconds' time. Before we do that, though, because he is very, very nervous tonight, I want each and every one of you to look at me and scream your face off. After three, one, two, three, scream! Thank you. Please, let your hands go to the stage. The sensation is fantastic. Mr. Jamie Morris! To, uh, to my grave, I like on my gravestone, went with a smile, a little picture on it, and me like, <laughs> did the cheesiest grin I can do. I felt so proud of him. And that boy can sing. Yeah, it's a new experience for me, yeah. It's a new experience. Yeah, yeah. Ah, come on in! 
Thank you. Thank you. Well nice done. One. Nice one. And you know what? what? You made me proud. Thank you, Belinda. Oh, thank you for coming. So nice. Seeing the chance that Belinda has given Jamie has finally allayed her fears. She surprised me because she's actually down to earth. She's genuine. And I'm quite happy for Jamie to be with Belinda in a career way. She's now the best person for Jamie. It's all himself, though. Yeah, no, but you know what? You kicked his ass. Nobody else has done that. Well, some asses need kicking, don't they, Flower? You make a Christmas CD, I'll buy it. Yeah. 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 It's Jamie's first taste of the high life, and for now, the sky's the limit. I know, I said to you, I didn't want you there, but... Uh, yeah. You know I love you, don't you, Jamie? Yeah. Next week, the Wakefields have to contend with an unwelcome house guest. If you don't like us, then get out of our house. He said no. Lightly lads Aaron and Mikey are trying not to let partying get in the way of their new business plans. It will work. There's no alternative. And there's big changes for best friends Jasmine and Kelsey, as Jasmine's mum announces that they're moving off the estate. Jazz is here. Calco, no more. So you may know Graham Norton is taking over BBC Three on Thursday to do one massive long show. His big chat starts at seven. And next, also for comic relief, it's Russell Brand's Give It Up gig. Music from Emily Sande and Kasabian and comedy from Noel Fielding and Simon Amstel, to name but a few.